Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Shannon. If you are new here, welcome. I wanted to do a, not a part two to the video that I did on preparing for calamity, but I did want to do a, maybe like a contingency video on things that you want to make sure that you have in your household. If there are any um, situations that go on, that either your electricity goes out or you have limited access to certain things that you know that you need on a regular everyday basis. The reason that I wanted to do the video was because I had a situation that occurred, um, you know, several months ago. So I wish I really would have been a lot more prepared. Um, and I, I'm pretty good with keeping, you know, extra stuff or whatever, but you know, when things kind of go sideways, you want to make sure that you have a variety of items for want to have a variety of things and you want to have multiple, right? So that you have options because if you don't have electricity for several days, if you don't have water for several days, if you're not able to cook like you regularly cook, you have to think of options. So I'm not going to be talking about buying huge cans of green beans or stockpiling and beans and things of that sort. And I'm definitely not going to be mentioning Spam or Vienna sausages. I, I don't have anything against Spam, but I don't do Spam. I'm not talking about MREs that are going to last for three years, 10 years or whatnot. I am going to be talking about things that can help you if you have something that is, you know, under a month, maybe two months, depending on how much stuff you get, and you have a variety. If you are vegan, gluten-free, vegetarian, I have some options in there for you too. So here we go. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the beverages that I would recommend. Um, if you are someone who is a coffee drinker and you don't have the ability to use electricity or your coffee maker, get some of these because they're like the little lattes or whatever that you can get. Um, I would recommend getting that. I'm not a huge coffee drinker. However, if I want to have something, I like to have it accessible and available. The other thing is getting a high protein shake. You know, if you are in a situation where you can't really cook or you're not really in a position to eat the way that you normally would or whatever, having one of these on hand is a great way to make sure that you're keeping your protein up um, and just keeping, you know, yourself sustained or whatnot and not eating a whole bunch of carbs or whatnot. Um, I have my vegetable broth. I love my vegetable broth. Um, like it because it adds a whole bunch of flavor. You can just drink it like, like you would juice or you can add it to stuff, cooking or whatnot. Um, and again, my juices, I love orange juice. And if the electricity would go out, I mean, most orange juice or whatnot that I get is in the refrigerated section. So this is pretty shelf stable. So if my refrigeration went out and I wanted juice after several days, I would have my orange juice available. Same thing with my peach and of course my almond milk. Love that stuff. Okay, hey y'all, these are some of my protein options. Um, not just meat, but also uh, vegan and vegetarian. And I'll start off with the meat options. I got this eight can um, chili, uh, uh, packet at Costco for six dollars and change, and I think that that's a really good deal. It is beef and bean chili, it is very high in protein 19 grams of protein. Um, you know, everybody sees these uh, tuna chicken is this one, and of course, the uh, salmon packets, those are really, really easy to work with. Um, I don't really typically eat these herring fillets, but I got this just in case something were to happen. And of course, you know, you get your canned meat or whatnot. I have that. In addition to my little beef sticks, grass fed and finished beef sticks. And so 
I like having that option as well. You can take it with you. They're lightweight, whatnot. You don't have to cook it. You don't have to do anything with it. Um, and then here are my plant base. This is uh, pasta, black soybean spaghetti, 25 grams of plant-based protein. Love this. It's high in fiber and it is vegan. I got this at Aldi's and it is organic and non-GMO. So if you want organic, vegan, you know, of course, vegetarian, obviously, um, high fiber, high protein, this stuff, I love this. Now I buy this on a regular basis anyway, but I, instead of using regular spaghetti, I use my black soybean um, spaghetti or I use my edamame um, to mix it up and give me a break from soy. I'll use my edamame a lot, but you can see the same thing. High, high, high protein. It's vegan and it is organic. And so again, these are from Aldi's. And that is an option for vegan. That's an option for high protein. Okay, so here are my carbs um, and carb alternatives. A lot of them, um, as you already saw from the previous one, are um, organic. This is new. This is uh, chickpea. I love um, the pastas that I have on hand. Um, but this one I really like because it is a gluten-free ramen and obviously with it being self-contained, it's going to be just a really option to easy option to have on hand. It is gluten-free and vegan like the other two pastas. And so I love that. Um, but if you are someone, you don't want to have to deal with any type of carb. You want something keto friendly. I love this riced cauliflower option. Again, I got this at the dollar store or 99 cent store, one of them. And then the ramen also at the 99 cent store. But this is self-contained just like the ramen. And so you don't have to, you know, cook it in anything. You don't have to create another whatever to put it in. It's actually already cooked and ready to eat. And it's a great um, keto option and also, um, you know, carb free essentially. Um, so that is a great option. Something else that I got at the 99 cent or dollar store, in addition to this one, and this one is this risotto. And this risotto is really good. I was really shocked, actually pleasantly surprised. Um, it's made in Italy, so it should have some pretty decent ingredients in there that, you know, um, just because it's made in Italy and it doesn't, a lot of the European countries don't have all of the chemicals in their food that we do in the United States. But another quick option, I really don't buy the powdered potatoes, but I bought these only because um, it's easy to fix. You know, all you have to do is add water and it cooks in four minutes. So these are some really good and inexpensive options. Again, got these at Aldi's. Um, got this just at the regular grocery store. These uh, three things I got at the 99 cent or dollar store and this I got at Walmart. Yeah, okay. Okay, next let's talk about snacks. I would really encourage everybody and recommend that you don't get things that are highly um, processed. Um, I got a lot of things like the tostones, the dried fruit, um, even though the seaweed is processed a little bit, nuts, um, nut bars that you know are not necessarily processed a lot things of that sort because you don't want to have any digestive issues. I would just, you know, anything weighing you down, making you sluggish. Um, so definitely make sure that a lot of your diet is not processed food or minimally processed food. I know it's really hard to get away from that, but minimally processed food, food is incorporated in your diet. And so obviously I know you guys already know about the rice and the beans and the peanut butter and all that other stuff, but here are some other options um, that you can think about. A nut mix, again, a lot of this stuff is gluten-free. A lot of this stuff, as you already know, is vegan. Um, so 
I try to get stuff that's very healthy and um, again, keeping the protein up because you can be a vegan and really not get the amount of protein that you need. Um, again, a lot of this stuff is organic. I know that I've got this at the dollar store that's not blend. And so um, I like having these small packets because you open it, you eat it, and you throw it away. There's not a lot of waste um, going on as far as, you know, keeping a container and then open it back up. The, the food is not exposed and all the other stuff. So I like that. The bars are gluten-free. I have this bar as well. I got this at Aldi's as well. It is a really clean bar. It only has eight ingredients, no high fructose corn syrup. It is gluten-free. However, um, the taste, oh, the taste. I was, I was not pleasantly surprised at the taste. But, you know, if the end of the world comes and I only have this bar, then I will eat it. So, anyway. And then I have my seaweed, as you can see. So I just wanted to highlight a few other things. I love the soups because they are a meal in a can. And this one is not only um, vegetarian and gluten-free, um, the French onion soup by Wolfgang, but this one is uh, vegan, this uh, fire roasted vegetable chili. So if you're a vegan, there are options, obviously soup options out there too. Make sure you get whatever you need to get. Um, I am also a huge fan of beans. I like beans because you can make an instant meal. You can do nachos. You can do so many different things with beans. Um, they don't need a huge amount of uh, heat to just kind of get them edible or whatnot. And then... Um, Love these packaged sun-dried tomato halves. No refrigeration necessary. And you can add them to different dishes, different pasta dishes, and things of that sort just to give your meal an oomph. Um, and then one of the snacks that I forgot to mention were these clusters, these nut clusters. So this is another option for a snack. And don't forget, you guys, I know I didn't mention any of the huge cans of stuff, but you definitely need to make sure that you have some fruit on hand. And I got my pear, peaches, mango, mandarin oranges, things of that sort. Again, stuff that's minimally processed. And if you're wondering like, hey, you know, okay, I got all my pasta stuff or whatever, but if I don't have electricity, what am I going to cook it in? Well, you're going to cook it in. I got this tiny, on my last video, um, I had a large uh, pot like this or whatnot. Uh, and so you can plug it into the mini generator that I talked about on the last video and you can make your pasta, add your sun-dried tomatoes, your pasta sauce, your cheese sauce, whatever. Um, you could do a lot of stuff with this little thing. So I hope that that information was at least a, a jump start for you all so that you could think about some things that are in line with that and then tweak them according to your own, um, you know, your own tastes or whatnot. So that's a great place to start and just kind of go from there. Again, a lot of the stuff is from the dollar store, the 99 cent store, single serve, unless you have a huge family, I would steer clear of the huge, huge, huge cans of stuff um, or anything that you would have to open that's like, you know, you can't seal back up the way that you want to. So anyway, I will drop it right there and leave a comment on some other things that you guys find helpful. And I will see you guys on the next video. Bye. So I know that there are a ton of other things that would be helpful. If you want to leave them in the comments below, I would love to know what else you would put on this list of, you know, things to make sure that you have for a short term catastrophe, calamity, um, shortage or whatnot, just to sustain you and keep you going, give you some variety, some yummy stuff. And, you know, with all of the options or whatnot, would love to love to know your um your recommendations and what you would actually get so please be sure to like the video leave a comment if you have any other recommendations and i will see you on the next video